Thanks for joining us for this Monday edition of our virtual town hall. I'm Kate Well show for Michael has the night off. As always, we have a lot to talk about tonight and it starts with some news about movie theaters. One of the last few businesses that have not been allowed to reopen since the start of the pandemic in New York and Regal Cinemas announced that it will be temporarily closing all of its theaters in the US and the UK as of this Thursday, less than two months after those theaters had reopened in some states. The CEO told the Wall Street Journal that they just don't have a product to offer right now, with so many big movies having been pushed back to late this year or even next year because of theater closures. In the meantime, people who work in those theaters and at the many locally run ones around Western New York are still waiting for guidance from the state on when reopening might come. And here to talk about all of it is Joe Mosher, president of the National Association of Theater Owners of New York. Joe, thanks so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're going to start with what local theaters are going through as they continue to deal with the shutdown. What are you hearing from them? Yeah, what's happening is, you know, local theaters are really the mainstays of their downtown areas or of shopping malls. And without them to drive traffic, other businesses such as restaurants and retail establishments are really suffering. Those businesses are all very, very codependent on each other. And theaters being shut down, you know, we still have our fixed expenses. We're still paying rent. We're still paying, you know, some utility bills, et cetera. It's, and taxes, certainly. Uh, it's very, very detrimental. I want to ask you what your assessment is in terms of responsive lawmakers, whether they're in Albany or in Washington. Do you think they could be doing yep. more to help those in the industry? Yeah, certainly. I mean, the National Association of Theater Owners is making pleas to the government because they have not made any kind of federal program that really fits uh, a movie theater's description. So we're too uh, too big for PPE, too small for a Main Street lending program, so to speak. So uh, it has been uh, incredibly difficult to get anything done. Um, in terms of reopening, uh, governors in 48 other states have allowed theaters to reopen. Uh, so we've done so very, very safely. We have a program called Cinema Safe. Uh, you can find it at cinemasafe.org. It shows all of our protocols that we have in place. And to date, in 48 other states where we've been allowed to reopen, not one case of COVID-19 transmission has been attributed to a movie theater. And that's even with the CDC still classifying going to a theater as a high risk activity. And then it recommends that people, mm -hmm. if they do go to the movies, stay home for as much as two weeks afterwards. And not to mention, we already see business owners having a hard enough time dealing with customers not wanting to wear masks in broad daylight, much less a dark mm -hmm. room. But from what you've said, theaters have been reasonably able to safely contend with all of those issues and guidelines. We've been totally able to contend with all those issues and guidelines. And I hadn't heard the recommendation that people stay home for two weeks after seeing a movie. Um, certainly, like I said, in the other states where we're allowed to reopen, um, I'm speaking to you from Connecticut right now where I live, and we have theaters open here in the state of Connecticut. You know, we've been open for a few months now and, and zero cases. Um, people are enjoying coming out and having that shared out of home experience. It's something that's been missing uh, since the initial COVID lockdown. Uh, and we're not forcing people to come to the movies. We're just, you know, giving them the option, you know, live free. So come to the movies if you'd like. Uh, but unfortunately, without Los Angeles and certainly without New York City being open, the studios have pushed most of their product off of the calendar this year into next year. Uh, there's still some stuff coming out on Christmas, but Warner Brothers just announced that Dune, which was supposed to come out at Christmas time, has been pushed to next year. So, you know, the studios really need action out of uh, New York, California does have a clear path for reopening, but New York, we've received no guidance, uh, no real word from the governor's office. We've answered every question that they've posed to us, but really it's the last few weeks have been crickets. And you kind of mentioned this earlier, but it's kind of tough for the theater industry to pivot like some you know, other industries have. So sort of bottom line this for us, if theaters aren't able to open until next year, what is that overall impact going to be? on the entire business across, you know, here in Western New York and, and across the whole state? Actually, across the whole country, um, theaters not being open have a detrimental effect. I mean, you, you mentioned the announcement about Regal. Uh, Regal can't afford to run the 500 and something locations that they've already opened in the 48 states where they've been allowed to because there's just no new product and the studios are not releasing big movies without New York and without LA. Uh, it's a big chicken and egg situation. So uh, the 
impact is, has been great. There are over 10,000 employees that work in theaters in New York State that are still out of work, uh, that are either furloughed or laid off at this point. And there are dozens of theaters that I know of that just are not going to reopen in the state of New York. And it's a very sad situation. I mean, movie going has been a time honored tradition since the early 1900s. And to have it end this way is tragic. We've been chatting with Joe Mosher, president of the National Association of Theater Owners of New York. Joe, thanks again for being with us. Thank you so much. And right now we're going to take a live look at Walter Reed Medical Center in Maryland, which the president says he will be leaving to head back to the White House in about an hour. And there have been a lot of questions over the weekend about the treatments he's been receiving at Walter Reed. It's something NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres is looking at tonight on Nightly News. Hi, Dr. John here with what you need to know about coronavirus today. It's Monday, October 5th. Here's the headline, breaking down the president's treatments. There are a lot of unanswered questions about President Trump's current condition after learning he tested positive for COVID-19. Since the president's diagnosis, he's been given three medical treatments, and I'm going to dive into what they are. But overall, the president's reportedly had a cough, fever, and two episodes of low oxygen levels since his symptoms started. Now, you've heard the word antibodies for the last several months. The president received an infusion of antibodies that's given to infected patients to try and boost the immune system and hopefully fend off the virus. Now, typically COVID patients can only get this through being part of a clinical trial or what's called compassionate use, meaning in a serious or life-threatening instance with special authorization through the FDA. The president did get this therapy through a compassionate use request. The treatment that is unusual to get for patients who are only mildly sick is dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is a steroid that's recommended by the NIH only for patients on ventilators or requiring supplemental oxygen. It's considered a promising drug for patients with severe symptoms of COVID-19 because there's evidence dexamethasone increases their chances of survival. But for patients with only mild symptoms, it can actually make things worse. Remdesivir is the third drug that's been administered to the president. It was the first drug we learned helps speed up recovery time and is now standard of care for hospitalized patients. So it would make sense that the president got this antiviral drug. At this point, the president's received all the medicines we think could help with the virus. Now, the next few days will be critical to see how he does. That seven to 10 day window after symptoms start really determines how severe the disease is going to be. So it's safe to say that the world, his doctors, and NBC News will be watching very closely to see how this plays out this week. Now we're learning more about this virus every day. So tune in to learn more tonight on NBC Nightly News.